What's up, gamers? That Game Dragon is here to give you five tips to dominate in Disgaea 6. Now, whether you're playing this for the first time or a hardcore veteran, you'll be able to use these tips to dominate in this game and get all the way to the final levels and make your characters monsters. So get ready, because we're about to start now. Tip number one for dominating in Disgaea 6. So what you're going to want to do is, I know you've got a ton of characters to choose from, but especially in the beginning, you're going to want to create yourself a Galaxy Mage. Now I'm going to tell you why. Galaxy Mages are super special for one reason and one reason only, and it is because they carry the most powerful spell in the game, which is Elemental Burst. Now, Elemental Burst is a beast. I'm telling you, it just wipes out monsters left and right with extreme prejudice. Now, here's what it looks like. See, you see, the beauty of Elemental Burst is that it doesn't matter how much SP you have, it'll just use that whole bucket and wipe it out for this super powerful star element spell. Um, that you can see is a double S rank, but that's not what makes it special. What makes it special is that no matter what your SP is, you're going to be able to utilize this. And compared to other characters, the cost of the SP that you're spending here compared to what it would cost to release a similar type spell that will cause the same amount of damage is like night and day. So while your other characters are struggling to level up, to get to the point where they can cause massive damage, the Galaxy Mages are basically able to do it almost right out the gate. And the quicker you build them up, the quicker you get them up to you know their higher levels, the more damage they'll do. In fact, I use two of them in my front line to clean everything up, and then the rest of my characters can just reap the rewards of the experience and the mana that's left on the ground. Now, to utilize this properly though, because remember I did say it clears out your entire SP bucket, you're going to need to do you're always welcome. this guy. And let me just show you real quick. Uh, where are you, where are you? Okay, here we go. So, in your evil tees, you're gonna want to have a couple of things. You're going to want to have this ma magic collection. And now magic collection is important because what it does is it will take 5% of that damage you dealt and give it back to your character in SP. And you're going to need that SP to continue to get this spell out, right? And because it ignores how much SP you have, it just uses whatever is in your bucket to release the spell. And that does not affect how powerful it is. This is basically your refill each and every time that you attack a character, beat it, you get refilled. Now the next go, you get to utilize it again and then again. Now if you have two of these characters on the field, right, then you get what I'm saying. You combine this with uh, Melodia, right, and you use her magic where uh, she can... Here, let me show you your where here. she basically gives you the opportunity to go again passionate approach right you put her on the field with with uh, one of these mages then you get to go twice right and double the damage and this will make more sense when you're grinding and you're trying to um, get those levels up so you could complete the much harder stages in the game right the Ending the game is just the beginning. The post game is where things get really intense. But that Galaxy Mage, or those Galaxy Mages, depending on how many you get, will get you through a lot of the hard work. And they are phenomenal at just clearing the field. And as long as you have that magic collection on, uh, you're basically, you know, unlimited amount of magic to utilize to run that particular spell and just wipe out everything and anything on there. And that's tip number one. So remember, get yourself at least one Galaxy Mage, if not two, but they're going to be critical for your growth and for you getting 
past a lot of the post stuff in Disgaea 6. Tip number two to dominating Disgaea is utilize the cheat shop. Now I know what you're thinking. Usually when you hear about cheats, uh, it's a negative thing, right? You're like, uh oh. And it means I didn't really do what I was supposed to in the game. But in Disgaea 6, utilizing the cheat shop the is here. actually considered something that is necessary to get past the later parts of the game. And I'll tell you why using utilizing the cheat shop is important, especially as quickly as you can. So as you progress through your game, you're going to get these cheat shop points that you can use. Now, you can do everything from maxing out the percentage of experience that you get to mana, money, weapon mastery, special skills, class proficiency. You can even go through the enemy strength and set how strong you want them to be or how strong you don't want them to be. And I implore you as you're grinding to utilize this because they will maximize how quickly you can level up. Uh, one of the other features that you see here is back to square one. Now what this will do is it will put the same enemy back in the same place after you've beaten this. Now this will make more sense as you progress through the game because if you try to go back then you'll see that there are different characters or enemies for you to fight there and you don't want that. You want to be able to actually use this to fight the gods of destruction as you are grinding through the game. And so there's a bunch of other things here but the ones that like I said you're going to need the most are going to be these guys right here. So your experience, mana, money, weapon mastery, special skill experience, and class proficiency as you build things up. And then of course the enemy strength. But as you can see here, I have it set to 2600 um, percent over what I usually get, which is the 100%. Uh, so this way you will actually level up very, very quickly. But again, you have to unlock this, uh, you unlock the different points. So as you get more points and you can move this as you see fit, right? So you take away from one to feed the other. Uh, and as you progress, you'll get the ability to use more of these points. And if you want to make things really difficult for yourself on the grind, you can, well, lower them even more. So that's number two. Tip number three, maximizing your karma. Now, in the beginning, getting karma can be really, really difficult. And it's basically super necessary if you're gonna be super reincarnating to create these crazy, powerful characters. But there's something you can do to make the process at least a little easier to get you through that first 9,999 level hurdle, which is if you look in your demerits, right? Let's scroll down and I will show you right here. See these juice bar ones? Now, at first glance, you're gonna look at them and be like, oh, that's so stupid, I'm not gonna do that there. There's so many, right? There, it goes all the way up to 255. Guess what? This, if you get up to 255, will give you up to 16 million karma right out the gate. So this is a big push to get your characters built out, especially in the beginning when you're not hitting those high, high level carnage, um, you know, versions or the hell versions basically of the game, this will allow you to get that karma so you can start building out your characters. Now, a real easy way to do this, even though it's time consuming, Welcome but I guarantee bar. you it is worth it, is go to the juice bar and what you're gonna do is for any character, basically, because you're going to have to unlock and claim that for each character so you can get uh, those 16 million for each, is you go to their proficiency for something. Let me find a character that I don't have much on. All right, so here's a good example. Oops. So you go to a character that you don't have uh, your max class or your weapon mastery high on. And what you do is, one at a time, just level up. It'll take you about, I don't know, I wanna say like 15, 20 minutes maybe to get to the 255. It's very quick, it's, it's not long at all. But you see you do this, and the beauty of this is at the same time, if you've used the cheat shop to collect 
uh, extra health for spending, well, you can also build out your class and your weapon mastery at the same time since you need to have 255 points of this. So it kind of serves a dual purpose for you because you're going to do this anyway to build out the proficiency. This is just a lot slower, um, but it will build out that class, build out that weapon mastery for you. So that's number three. Tip number four, utilize the squad shop. Now this is super important. I think a lot of folks bypass this, this squad shop. but as you get your armada of characters, right? Uh, the one thing you want to do is go into the squad shop and start putting them into different squads. Now, I'll tell you why this is super helpful because you can use squads to do all types of things. So one of the main squads I want you to focus on is the Overlord's Guard. Once you have this unlocked, you can put up to four characters in here and what it'll do, it'll decrease their experience gain by 20%, but it'll blow their growth rate for everything else through the roof. And as you collect, right, you can get that juice bar experience. You can spend it here to increase the growth rate up to level nine. So you can see you'll pile it all the way up even, even more. Um, and your characters will just be amazing. Like they're gonna blow it apart. So that is tip number four. And again, there are other squads here. So you can use research and support, life support squad. Like there are squads to get you more stuff from the juice bar. There's a boot camp squad, so you can share experience in battle. You can share experience from, uh, well, not experience, mana gained. Um, you can utilize the character to make your innocent farming a lot better. There's just a lot. So that's number four. Number five, the Dark Assembly. Now, the Dark Assembly is something that a lot of folks, uh, especially if they haven't played this guy before, they avoid, they find it you know, somewhat intimidating. But besides getting your Super Reincarnate on, there are several things you should be doing for each and every battle when you are grinding because it'll save you so much time. So one of the things you want to do is get the triple experience right because this will last for one match and i'm gonna show you a little tip here and we'll see if it fails now yep so here you can see up oh, they didn't approve it right now what most folks do is that they go right into either giving up or persuade by force but remember you got the cheat shop so you've hopefully been adding uh a little extra hell into your account right so the easiest way to do this is you pay a small percentage of what you have and well depends on what we talk about small like here it's a million two hundred thousand twenty hell but you're gonna see you're gonna rack up so much money in the post game right that this is gonna be insignificant you just hit that and boom approved right now that eliminates so much time and the other thing is you don't have to wait for that animation where you get um them saying yay nay yay nay like you just hit x and it'll speed right through that so that was the first one right you want to get your triple xp the next one is praise my performance right so what this will do is any mvp character right and mvp rules change every single round that you're in so you, you don't really know what the mvps are going to be but you will get um extra extra experience points for being an MVP as well. So that like super worth it. And then the other thing that you want to do is now two more is throw a welcome party. So after you super reincarnate, right? And never super reincarnate all your characters, right? Just super reincarnate a few at a time um, because you want to leave, like we said before, those galaxy mages, right? You want to make sure that they are kind of cleaning house for you while the rest of your characters are scooping up the experience, right? And so one of the other things you want to do is welcome party. So you throw this, you do the welcome party. And again, that's another layer that you're adding for building experience. So, so get your characters going from basically level one all the way up, right? And it'll do it in one match. So, I mean, this is like critical, critical 
to growing your characters beyond where you want them to be. Now, the other thing uh, you might want to look at is hog all your XP if you want to build out one specific character and you want to boost them up very quickly. But outside of that, I like to do this guy right here, which is charge my bonus gauge. And what that'll do is it's really hard, uh, especially if you have those galaxy mages cleaning out to build that bonus bar up. So what this will do is it'll start out uh, the match at level three and then anything you add on top of that is gravy. But that's more than enough usually to scoop a lot of good weapons, especially if you're grinding. Um, so I would s really suggest that you do that. I do that each and every time. Utilize Finished with your the Dark Assembly. It is critical to the growth of your characters. It's critical to getting you to the next level. Um, it's one of the things that if you don't use it correctly, you're going to be pouring hundreds of hours for no reason when you can make your life a whole lot easier. So that's number five. Well, everyone, those are our five tips for dominating in the sky. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment below. Ask your questions. You have a great one. I'll see you soon.